Hey folks, it's Tech Nivers here. This is a printer that I've just decided I'm going to take out of mothballs that's been sitting around for a while. I did get some extensive use out of it. However, this video is to show you how to maintain your printer or bring it back to life after it sits for a while, or more specifically, if you buy a used printer, and the Ender 3 is very, very common on the secondhand market, how to check and make sure that everything is properly connected and hooked up right before you move on to turning it on. And I do have it plugged in. Your first urge may be to just turn the machine on and see if it works, but first there are a few things you want to check before even powering it up, let alone trying to home the machine. So here we have it. This is actually a pretty heavily modified Ender 3 V2. As you can see, it's collected quite a bit of dust. It's kind of just been sitting in my uh, non-working printer bay over there in the basement here for a couple of months. Not exactly an ideal place to leave a mechanical device for long periods of time and I have no reason to suspect if I fire it up it won't just turn on but before I turn it on I wanted to check a couple of things. First and foremost before I power up the device one of the things I'm going to check are the exposed connections just to make sure that everything's plugged in properly. Now most of the mechanics of this device are down here with the actual board that runs it so I'm fairly certain those are all plugged in. I'm not going to take the bottom off, but there are some other plugs, such as on the screen here, that may need a little bit of attention. This one looks like it's in a little bit crooked, so I'll just push that in all the way. And specifically, one of the other things you want to look at is the bed connection back here. Now, this piece that looks like it's at an angle is actually just a bracket to hold it in place. The actual connection is going to be underneath here. So I'm just going to take a look and it looks like everything's hooked up. There's an easy remove clip here on this version. Now the original Ender 3 and the Ender 3 Pro don't have this, so um, it's safe to assume on this printer it's connected. If you don't have something securing it like I do, you're definitely gonna wanna check and make sure that that is connected as well. The rest of these cables here, coming from the hot end, are basically gonna all go down to the motherboard down there. And like I said, I'm fairly certain those are plugged in. So next, it's on to a few other things. One of the major things that happens with printers that sit too long and collect dust is the z-axis gets a little bit gross. Now this one I can feel is very dry and it should be. It shouldn't be completely greasy but I might just add a couple drops of lubricant to the riser on the z-axis rod here to ensure that it moves smoothly when I start the machine. So let's go ahead and grab a little machine grease. So the first thing we're going to want to do with any printer that we're trying to restyle or refurb is take care of any dust that may be left over on the machine. Because we're going to be lubing up some parts and moving some parts and reaching in places and checking things out. But as you may know, dust and mechanical components are not really good bedfellows. So we're going to clean them up as best as we can. Look it over once or twice. Now I've already dusted most of this off because I didn't want to show you how atroci atrocious it actually was when I pulled it from mothballs, but there is still quite a bit of mess left on pieces of this. We're just going to get it as clean as we can so that none of those uh, spots cause us an issue in the future. And once we have it all cleaned up, now we're ready to actually do some maintenance. One of the first things you're going to want to do is get yourself some tube grease. And by the way, I did dust this rod because we don't want it filling with dust and gunking it up or anything grainy. And I'm going to apply a fair amount to the rods just above and below the riser that rides on the Z rod. So that is this, uh, this guy right here. And as you can see, if I zoom a little closer here, as well as the fact that I didn't clean that well enough, I did get a little gob of the grease on both sides. So now I'm just going to leave that and you should have a motor attached there if it's an Ender 3. If you have a direct drive printer, the motor will be on top of the gantry and not here, so it's a little bit easier to lube that up all around. So that is our first step. Now, you can, if you want, manually turn it a little bit and make sure it's rising and running smoothly, and this one is actually really smooth, but I wouldn't recommend turning the motors too much by hand. What you're really gonna wanna do is wait until you have the machine on and then you're gonna test it out. That will increase the distribution of the grease that we've added here and ensure that the parts that the machine needs to ride on are adequately lubed. 
after we're done with that, the next thing we're going to check is the eccentric nuts. Now, an eccentric nut is a nut that is not, the hole is not in the center. And the reason for that is, is as you turn the nut, you can adjust the distance between the rod that goes through the nut and another surface. In this case, the contact surface we're talking about is this vertical piece of V-mold railing here. And the eccentric nut is on the inside wheel. These other two have spacers. This one is actually a nut, and I can show that to you real quick here. You see the typical hexagonal shape of an eccentric nut. Over here you see spacers. So the best way to test if the nut needs to be tightened on the gantry is to try and wiggle it a little bit. And if you don't see it sliding up and down the rail as you wiggle it, it's tightened and adjusted properly. There is also an eccentric nut on the wheel of the bed. On this printer, it's actually in the front. And those are the, these are for leveling the bed. Those are the wheels it actually rides on. So there's an eccentric nut there. If I can get it to focus, you can see it. And that needs to be tightened as well. And the way to tell if that's tight is to grab the bed and just give it a little wiggle. And if it seems loose, you're gonna need to reach down there tighten that up against the rail and the last thing we're gonna check before we fire up our machine is the tension on the belts and we're gonna do that by adjusting the knob at the front of the Y axis and the side of the X axis now best way to tell if your belt's tight enough is to give it a little strum you should get a little reverberation reverberation you should get a little reverberation like a guitar string there so you can usually pluck these ones from the bottom and these seem to be tight enough. If it's not tight or it's too tight, you can adjust it using these wheels. Now this one is not from an Ender 3. There's usually a little black knob here or a blue one like that one. I stole this from a TiVo Tarantula because I thought it looked cooler and it was bigger for a little bit more fine control. So. finally ready to turn the machine on. So I flipped the switch in the back and you can see here that everything seems to be working properly. I'm gonna go ahead and home the machine. Now we have a few more maintenance things we can do before we need to print, such as leveling the bed. So I'm gonna show that real quick here. Now, modern systems have an ABL system where you can just auto bed level, but if you're using the paper method, you're gonna to wanna to go to every corner and adjust the wheels until it is just snug enough to move the paper slightly in between. And then you're going to want to do it again and go around diagonally. Now that I've got the bed all leveled out, we're going to run a few test prints. One of the first things we're going to print is a calibration cube, and we do that because it's a specified size and we can measure it and make sure we're extruding properly. However, you should expect to run into a few hiccups at first because, you know, not every, everything in life is perfect. So the problem I was having here was it was too close to the bed. That wasn't because of leveling. It was a Z offset problem. So. I adjusted the Z offset a little bit, which I can post a video about in the corner, and I ran it again. This time it started off way better. However, my lost adhesion, as you can see, and the piece had to be started a third time. So I adjusted my Z offset once again. All right, so we are up and printing. When I'm done printing this, I'm gonna measure the cube itself and see if it's the dimensions we specified. And from there, I can make some other minor adjustments. So now from here, Basically, all we need to do is the basic stuff you would do to a new printer to make sure it's calibrated properly, which is run a few test prints and maybe make some minor adjustments. Now, I'll link to a series that'll give you uh, some hot tips on what to do next up here, especially for the Ender 3, but it works on pretty much all these old Cartesian style machines, such as the uh, old artilleries and the A-nuts. We'll be pulling some of them out of mothballs here shortly and also getting this awesome artillery over here I have running, but. So there you have it folks. The used printer is all back up and running. Everything seems to be in working order. If you need more in-depth videos on this or any printer like it, such as the Cartesian machines behind me, I will put up a link in the corner here. Feel free to check that out. It will also give you the next steps, which is basically to do all of the test printing and calibration you would do if you purchased a new printer just to make sure that everything is running as smoothly as possible and up to your specs. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. If it was helpful, please subscribe, leave a like down below, and leave me a comment on any specific questions you have 
regarding this machine, I'll see if I can point you in the direction of a video because I probably already have it. And if not, you might get lucky. I might make one just for you. Tech Never is out.